So welcome everybody. Uh, in this talk, we will introduce our brand new Eclipse project, EMF Parsley, which is a framework for easily uh, implementing and customizing UI components based on EMF <coughs> models. Um, I'm Lorenzo Bettini. I'm a researcher at the University of in Computer Science in Turing. And these are Vincenzo Caselli and uh, uh, Francesco Guidieri from RCP Vision, which is an Italian company based on Eclipse. So our goal with this project is to, have, to easily have a user interface starting from an EMF model. And the requirements uh, are that all these components should be easily usable in an existing application. So you don't have to use our framework right from the start. And all the mechanisms uh, must be easily uh, customizable. Our starting point uh, was EMF Edit uh, because of its nice dynamic reflective capabilities to uh, represent a, a UI based on EMF model. We had, uh, we experienced some problems in using that and most of all it's the setup time because uh, it's not straightforward to write all the instructions to uh, set up a UI component based on EMF model. And uh, we had some problems in maintaining uh, manually written and uh, customized generated code. So uh, for the first point, what we mean is that uh, we would like to avoid uh, the typical boilerplate code that you need to write to set up a viewer, for instance, uh, with editing capabilities. And we would like to avoid to have the generated not pattern, and we want to avoid things like casts and most of all internal details, for instance, on <coughs> images. So. Uh, as I said, EMF is a very young project. The current version is only uh, 0.1.0. Many things are still provisional. Um, the main um, principles in EMF Puzzle is that all the components that we provide are small and are easy to reuse in an existing application and easy to customize. And we split all the responsibilities into small classes, and these small classes are injected in the framework using Google Jewish Dependency Injection Framework. So that it will be easy to write only the uh, customization of that specific aspect, and it's easy to inject it in the, an existing, in the existing framework in a consistent way. So these are only a few examples of the components that we provide. We will see some more in the demos. We will have some demos, uh, like tree viewer, table viewers, forms. And most of these components are already usable as they are. You, you just uh, use it and that's all. Uh, but you can customize all the aspects uh, of, of these viewers. So just a few words. Um, we took much inspiration from Xtext. Uh, we reused the same um, reflective API for Google Jewis. So for specifying Jewish bindings, you can write the bind methods. Uh, if you already know Xtext, that's basically the, the same uh, mechanism. And we borrow from Xtext also the polymorphic dispatch mechanisms. So what you can do, you can write uh, methods specifying the type of the object that you want to customize. No casts, no instance offs, and the framework will select the right method at runtime, okay? So uh, time for the first demo, and I pass the microphone to Vincenzo. Okay, now the starting point is an EMF model. In this case, we have a model representing a mail system with accounts, uh, folders, and mails. And now we will create a new plugin uh, with the help of a uh, wizard provided in Parsley. The wizard is based on templates, and for every template, you can see what you have to provide. In this case, we will choose a tree view template and you have to provide the EMF resource URI. With this is the DSL, which we'll see later. 
In this case, the URI is a XMI URI. Okay, now we have to copy the generated XML into plugin XML the first time. Now we can run the application. And now we can see what we basically can obtain with EMF edit just within seconds and without boilerplate code. So um, now we want to customize the uh, label provider of the, of the industry. So we can go to the Google Juice module class and bind a custom label provider. We will use a standard JFace label provider to start, begin with. We need then to implement the get text method. Obviously, we need the dependency from the model. Okay, so now we can implement the method with instance of, casts, and so on, <coughs> the usual JFace way. We are mimicking the famous er ACP mail example just within seconds in front of you. Okay. So now we can run the application and see that for accounts class, we have the correct label provider, but we have lost the reflective a capability of uh, um, EMF edit. So now we just use the right class, which we provide into Parsley, EMF Parsley, which is Sorry. <laughs> coming. Oh. It's a viewer label provider, which is a Parsley class. We need to add the constructor and use the inject method, inject annotation in order to make uh, Google Juice work correctly. And then we run the application and we have the correct behavior again working. So now we can also have more, we can simplify uh, this method and by using the polymorphic dispatch mechanism that Lorenzo just explained, we can just write this simple method. So we have no cast, we have no instance of, just that simple. Okay, we can go. We can do the same with the folder object. So at runtime, the right method will be picked up and executed upon the selection. Okay, so okay. let's go back to the presentation. So as we said at the beginning, we want to make the use of this framework easy. You, already, you have already seen some project wizards, but most of all, uh, our aim is to hide the internal details, things like data binding, editing domain, dirty state in editors, will be managed by the framework. So if you don't want to care about them, you can ignore them. 
but if you want, you still have access to them. And most of all, to make things easier, we implemented a DSL for the customization. The DSL <coughs> is implemented in Xtext and Xbase, so we will end up with a very nice IDE tooling. And thanks to Xbase, uh, we can debug that DSL, but most of all, uh, we can uh, have access to all the Java types which are accessible in your project. And we have a very, thanks to Xbase, we have a very powerful uh, Java-like expression language. And the <coughs> idea is that all the customizations will be put in a single file and, from, and, and the syntax will be very compact. And from this file, we will generate all the corresponding Java classes. But, and most of all, we also generate all the Google Jewish bindings. So all the things, all the details about injection you saw before, you can forget about them. But if you want, you can still uh, mix uh, written Java code with the DSL. This is just an idea of the DSL. You see, everything is in a single file, including parse definitions. And uh, the syntax is very compact, but still is, uh, is a Java-like expression language. And as I said, from the single file, we generate lots of Java code, including Google Jewish binding. We use the generation gap pattern, so uh, everything that you put in your source folder will be not overwritten, so you can mix them. Um, so let's see this second demo using the DSL. Okay, now we will create a second uh, plugin with the help of the Parsley wizard. Now we will choose another template, which is the on selection form template that does not need anything to provide. So this is this DSL. We have to ch uh, copy the generated XML into plugin XML the first time. can just run the application and as you see in this in, in a few seconds we have an editable form that can edit any selected object on the tree now we have the complete uh, synchronization of the part uh, the duty state management uh, we have the uh, persistence uh, with when we save uh, and and so on now, uh, we have a complete RCP mail application just in seconds. Uh, so now, we want to customize this uh, form. For example, we want to change the title of this form. And then we can go to the DSL and... And we want to do that only for the mail object, not for the other objects. So we specify we that... The dependency. Yes, the dependency from the model. So now, with the help of uh, uh, code completion, you see the access to the uh, Java type, type system. You can specify that for the object mail, we want uh, this expression for the title of the form. So when we select a mail object, we will see this Okay, we can also uh, um, customize the icon to the left of the text, <coughs> just in the same block of the DSL using the keyword image. And in this case, we can just specify the name of the file without any internal class to get to the image. Okay, we get the image. So now we want to change the feature show it in the form. In this case, let's say we want to uh, represent only the from recipients and message and omit the subject from the uh, for in, in the form. So we can just specify which feature has to be shown and in which order. 
and look at the code completion and how easy it is to specify. You can see the features, just the features for the mail. Okay. So now we can see that for the message class, we can see just this feature in this order, okay? So now we want to change the caption of the feature. For example, we want to replace the recipient's label caption, and so we can specify this. With this keyword. So now the syntax is a little different because we are uh, referencing a, a specific uh, feature, mail, recipients, and then we want to show the string to, for example, but we can uh, write any expression. So we got it. So uh, now we want to change the control, the widget used in the message and uh, have a multi-line text instead of a single line text. So we can uh, customize the control and say that for the object mail, for the feature recipients, no message, excuse me, we can create a text so we can create a text with some option, let's say SWT option uh, border, but above all SWT multi. Okay, then <coughs> we can also use the data binding. So we specify the target Okay, this is the data binding to the, uh, <coughs> to the model. Okay. So uh, this is an example of uh, that you still have access to data binding if you want, okay? Okay, now we have the uh, widget change it, okay. We can also um, reduce and simplify this code thanks to XBase. This is a first uh, uh, refactoring, and this is the second refactoring, and we can reduce it to this simple this. Okay. Uh, well, so now we want to change something in the uh, tree, and we don't we don't want to get rid of mail. Uh, on in the tree. So we go to the DSL corresponding to the tree and change the content provider this, this time. So the viewer content provider, uh, we in the viewer we can specify that for the folder we just show the subfolder collection. Subfolder uh, Okay, just the subfolders collection. So this is the customization. Okay, no more mails. Okay, now how we can get to the mails? Well, we have prepared um, a plugin which we will import. It's uh, just a simple plugin that uh, is using the table um, parsley component. So just we import this, execute the application, and now we have the table that is showing only the uh, mass, uh, the mail uh, um, belonging to a folder, and we have so we now have a complete RCP mail um, made in in a few seconds. Oh, we also have 
uh, a complete, uh, we can create child and uh, remove object. We have dialogues to edit things, and all the stuff. Okay. <coughs> oh, so now uh, this is a short recap of the components that you, we have seen. Um, we want to bring your attention to the fact that we are uh, working uh, to uh, to have parsley working with E4 paths. And uh, we have out of the box integration with CDO and RAP. And for this, we have some demos. Also, these demos are all included in the uh, Parsley examples. So we now are launching the CDO server. Now we are launching. two instances to two clients, CDO clients, which are using a view that is um, uh, using a three form component provided in Parsley, which is a combination of the tree and the form. So we now have two clients and thanks to the CDO, mechanism, we have the complete synchronization of the clients. Okay. Uh, we have also um, RAP implementation, single sourced with the previous one. So now just we just run the browser with URL. So we have the same application into the web and with the, thanks to CDO, to the, we have the capability of notification of the clients upon a modification of one of them. See, okay. Uh, well, now we have um, also a demo, a short demo on the integration with Eclipse 4. And for the Eclipse 4 part, we have, well, this is a, the, a, the, 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 the sh all you need to uh, use EMF Parsley with E4, uh, there are a couple of lines. Well, there is a part where uh, we have to uh, may coexist to injection system, the GUIS injection and the uh, Eclipse 4 part. So now we have to take um, uh, the injector from the GUIS, from GUIS and then use, uh, um, well, we have a reference to the application because we wanted to show in a part, in an Eclipse 4 part, the Parsley on the EMF model uh, of, of Eclipse 4. So, so now we can show we can show the, this part. So you are s you what you are seeing is EMF showing the EMF uh, <coughs> the e Eclipse 4 EMF model. So we can, for example, uh, change something for in this model. For example, we can change the orientation of a part and immediately the model is changed. Or we can change some label on the part. Let's see the part up, up there. Okay, we are managing the the EMF, the Eclipse 4 model. Okay. Um, 
this is uh, uh, as there are some examples of application that we have made uh, for our customers, and in this case we have an application that is using a uh, people editor or and um, a graffiti based editor, and then we added uh, the uh, uh, in the left side views you, uh, with EMF, so you can see how it uh, can be customized the, the views. We have also another uh, um, application. So we have uh, also here uh, EMF in some views. EMF parsley, uh, yes. <laughs> OK, uh, we, will, we are organizing the Eclipse Day Florence, the third edition of Eclipse Day Florence in um, the 2014. You are all invited. And so, <laughs> contest time. So you have the chance to win some cool prizes. Um, you can win two copies of the of my ex textbook, and you can win five uh, seed pod growing kits for uh, growing your own parsley, even in the office. So, <laughs> cool prizes. All you have to do is to tweet with these two hashtags and the first two tweeters will win the book and the other one will win the growing kit and we will communicate the winners on twitter so start tweeting now <laughs> <laughs> and these are the references to our project the update site we also have a poster session Tomorrow at 10. Um, I think that concludes the talk. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank Ed Merckx and Ike Stepper for mentoring the project. Thank you very much. And uh, that's if you have questions. Yeah. When I think about what things I specialize in, Yeah. Yeah. Language, yeah. We, we we were working also on the common stuff, uh, but uh, one thing we forgot to mention is that if you have your edit plugin, then we we will use that. Mm -hmm. So you you can also do all the you can start with an application which is customized with the with the, uh, the custom provider. Yeah. Still get yeah. Nice yeah. Because updates. basically. In the end, we use EMF edit and, and all the adaptive factories mechanism. So everything you do in your edit plugin, we'll, we will pick that up. And you can mix the customization in the end. Yeah, what you showed is crazy cool. I mean, that's bizarre that you're editing the workbench model of the layout. That's crazy cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah? Uh, when it comes to uh, customizing the form, Yeah, yeah, you, you, you can, in that part, if you want, you have the full freedom of using your own widgets. Uh, we used uh, an utility method, create text, which hides the parents and the other things, but you can uh, write any uh, SWT bot or Nebula uh, control in there. You, you have the full control. What, what we saw is are just some convenience uh, utility methods, but you, you can do what you want in there. You can also create more than one control mm. for, for a single feature and, and write a composite which includes them. You, you can do that. And, well, yeah, but um, most of all, uh, if you don't like that syntax, you can still write Java code. We, we have a version which corresponds to, to that uh, part in DSL. It's just that we think that with the DSL it's easier and more compact. But and it's interesting too, yeah, not having to switch back to plain old Java code for um, instantiating custom controls, but to do it right now in, in this. But, but you can do that. I mean, if you import it in your project, mm -hmm. you, you have access to all the Java types.
Yes? Uh, how do you handle uh, uh, cutting inheritance if you have in uh, in your model? So if you have a big model with a lot of class inheritance inside, can you define some uh, editors and uh, classes it somewhere on the base, and then another class, another editor, some classes that are overriding, are, are extending those base classes and so on. Like for example, you have the um, uh, uh, feature provider where you, where you restrict the number of features. For example, you could have some IDs on, on base classes that are really not interesting to show to the user and you want to hide them. But some uh, top level classes might also provide some uh, features that you would like to hide. To. How you, you, can you combine those? those yeah. 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 Probably, I, I don't. I'm not sure that whether you can do that in the DSL. But if you write a, a, a Java custom feature provider, then in that case, you 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 both have the polymorphic dispatch mechanism, but you still can write uh, your own overridden method where you specify all the features you want in the way you want. So if you want, you can go down uh, to that lower level. Yeah. Um, we only have five minutes. Oh, uh, you seem to very nicely handle the transition from the non-juice world to the juice world. Um, and since perhaps EMF Eddy is only kind of half core, is there any possibility that actually EMF Eddy might be juiced from the outset rather than requiring um, so uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. You, you're asking if you if it's possible to somehow uh, put injected th injected code into EMF edit. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was wondering if it wasn't worth moving your functionality up so that EMF edit inherently was customizable through injection. Well, yeah, probably might require some work, I think, but as I said, if you want to do a transition and you already have your edit plugin, then that plugin will be used in our framework. So uh, you're not even forced to use customizations like that. So you, you can do things gradually. Uh, concerning putting injected things in EMF edits, um, I don't, I don't know. I think the, there was a blog post by someone who was showing something similar. But uh, I, d I don't know for sure. Um, what about IAKN? I assume when you are writing your code in the Java, you can use the standard um, Eclipse features. But what about the uh, DSL? Can you use also some IAKN features there? What? Internationalization. Uh, um, not at the moment, but I mean, we, we can work on that. Okay. Yeah, not at the moment. All right. uh, yeah, probably should, shouldn't be too hard. I mean, when we uh, generate the strings in Java, we probably uh, can do uh, that automatically. <coughs> we still haven't cared about that, but that should not be hard, I think. But they are just expressions, and Java yeah. would also just call like the result. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if you if you wrap those <coughs> strings in uh, so in a method call, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that already in that way. Yeah. Thanks. Do you have uh, like a roadmap for the next step? With, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry. How many people are working on the project? Well, for the moment. Uh, Three of us. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't work for the company, but I think some of their clients are. Oh yes, we have uh, uh, customers that are using Fastly um, in production, and uh, but we are uh, eager to have feedback from you. And or I mean, concerning other uh, parts, as I said, we would like to customize the command. Uh, I mean, the way you can specify the context menu items. And we also want to, to integrate valid EMF validation 
um, so that it could be easier to specify validation constraints. Of course, at the moment, EMF validation works out of the box, but uh, we would like to contribute some, some ways in the DSL to, to specify validation rules in a more declarative way, let's say. And we are working on other components. And of course, the components that are in the framework could also be, see a, be seen as a reference implementations. So you can write uh, the framework at a low, you can use the framework at a lower level and write your own components. Okay, we have to stop. So thanks everyone. Thank you.